Ever wonder what happens to the plastic in the ocean? Well, I think we're going to not only find out, but see how inspiring it can be. Dave Katz is going to tell us about ocean plastics, can solve global poverty, and how you, you can help. I'm David. Good afternoon. I'm a friendly Canadian. And I start with that because I've got three little asks. I'm going to begin with the end in mind. And at the end of my little few moments here, I'm going to ask you to participate with me. One, either come and talk to me. Come and collaborate in this great revealing idea. Or I'm going to ask you to please talk about us, tell others about what you might learn in the inspiration of change. And three, tell others to participate and change with us. And I'll begin with this idea. Who else here thinks that the last thing we should do is clean up the ocean? I do. I really do. Because if you walk into the kitchen and the sink is overflowing, water spilling all over the floor, seeping into the foundation, up the walls, beginning to destroy everything that you love. You have in front of you a bucket, a mop, or a plunger. What do you do first? The answer, turn off the tap. Turn off the tap. This image in Haiti, this one in Haiti as well, they, like a tropical climate, have two seasons. One, the Great Collection. Two, the Great Purge, also known as the dry season and the wet season. I'm always asked, well, David, how is there so much plastic in the ocean? And Carl was so great. What a great setup to reveal this catastrophe that's unfolding in front of us. And I can tell you that it's just a waterway. It really is the garbage dump of the planet. Well, we all know that there is no throw it away, it goes somewhere. And we continue to see areas around the world, those that are most impoverished, with no other solid waste infrastructure, having this opportunity but to throw it in the canals and rivers. But I'm here talking about something exciting and enlivening, and I'm here to talk about solution. And it lies in this very metaphor, that if you're walking down the road, stepping over bars of gold and pockets of diamonds and gems, and wherever you go, you've got the glimmer of jewels and gold under your feet. You see it everywhere, and you, you want to bend down and pick it up. But you think while you pick it up, well, what would I do with it? There's no bank that I can take it to. There's no store that I could spend it at. No one will exchange anything with, with me. Well, would you pick it up? It is, in essence to you, worthless. And I'm here to talk about just that. You see, the plastic bank, we continue to build the world's largest store for the ultra, ultra poor where everything in the store is available to be purchased using plastic garbage. In the stores, we offer everything from school tuition, illness insurance, medical care, communications, power, sustainable cooking fuel, clean water, fortified food, and everything else that is just so critically important to the poor. Let me assure you that you cannot convince a man against his will, he is of the same opinion still. You can't work into abject poverty and convince people to recycle. It's never going to happen. If you don't have food for your children or you're sick and you can only think about the end of the day, but you can enliven someone when it's something that's in it for them. You see, when they now look at plastic not as plastic or the waste beneath their feet, but as the opportunity to educate their children and an opportunity to be able to have illness insurance for the income earner 
of the home so in case something happens to them, their livelihoods aren't interrupted? Powerful ideas. This is an example of one of our collection centers in Haiti, operating in the most impoverished areas of the world, creating the very infrastructure that inherently reveals the value in a petroleum-based resource. And inside of everything that we're doing is an IBM architected and engineered banking platform for the ultra poor, where the input is plastic waste, where you can go out through the day, become a recycling entrepreneur, collect volumes of material, take it to one of our collection centers, have it weighed, and a value is deposited into your account. Considering that one out of every three children born today will never have a birth certificate. Many will never have a last name. Now, plastic gives you all of that. And as we continue to build, really being the candy crush of recycling. The gamification, the incentification. So that the more, other, the more collectors that you bring into your ecosystem, the more volume that's collected by your ambitions, the higher the credit rating you get. The higher the credit rating, the more access to financial tools. The greater access to financial tools, the greater your life increases. All now available around plastic garbage. Now, it's not the only solution, but we're a powerful solution. And we continue to open centers, and we continue to grow, now into the Philippines, entering into Indonesia. We've seeded Brazil. Even in Brazil, a beautiful experience. Working with the church, creating a, a sermon, so that every Sunday the parishioners are not just encouraged to bring offering on Sunday, but to bring the recycling as well putting people in action and service over creation. Then taking that recycling, taking that parish and matching it with the favela. How beautiful. What gift. What value. You see, because that's what we do. We gather the world together, creating a conduit for everyone to participate. And we reveal value in material, reveal value in people, we continue to be in the verb of love, being in action. To love is to do. When we engage the global north, what we've created in Vancouver with a bottle deposit program, is that now every household, every school, every institution, every family has the opportunity to gather their recycling once a week, once a month, whenever, take it to one of the return depots where they would get their deposit back, and they can now deposit it into the account of the poor. Putting people into the action of change. Simply just being a conduit. Earlier today, we talked about engaging petroleum companies in change. I can tell you that one of the biggest companies in the world has become one of our partners. However frowned upon they may be, Shell Oil is making a commitment to not use the very petroleum that they mine for the production of plastic for themselves. They've made a 100% commitment to only use recycled or social plastic, our category. Social plastic. Thank you. So consider that social plastic, very material, transacted by the world for the world. What change, what opportunity? What Carl may not have mentioned is that almost all of the plastic ever produced is still here. Very little burned for energy. Somewhere around 11 trillion pounds of plastic. Now, let's just for rough numbers because I need to be quick, 50 cents per pound. A five and a half trillion dollar opportunity. Estimated that somewhere around 500 billion can alleviate extreme poverty in the planet. 
we've been inadvertently depositing the very value to end it. And we are just now in the process of collecting it, creating the system to mine it. Now I'm supported beautifully by my good friend Bill Stark here from IBM. Also a great partner. Working with us to create the very technology to change the planet. A platform available from any phone that you can register as a collector or a redemption center or a recycling center. Being able to absolutely automatically transact the value of the material Let's say you sell eggs, and you rely on the poor as your customer, and they don't have very much money, and you rely on that. But now you register yourself as a redemption center, and the people who have been collecting plastic who have value in their account can come to you and take that value and transact that, that value to you. You see, we're creating a new globally recognizable and tradable currency, social plastic. Simple, and yet so, so powerful. There's much more to tell you. I have only four minutes left. Most of it comes in questions and conversation, and I wanted to take these last few moments to open it to you, to begin to engage a conversation, because I am here strictly to talk, to me, and engage you. What kind of questions might there be? Yes, sir. As always, the question is, where does the plastic go? Well, it's recycled, of course. And, and you're finding, and, and our biggest worry is, is there a market that, that for the plastic? At this yes, point? and one thing that I didn't mention, silly me, um, is that plastic we sell to great global brands that want to be a part of the solution. That social plastic, you see, because then they get to engage their customer. And so that every time you go to the shelf and buy a bottle of shampoo, you would as well be gathering with the world's poor to extract that plastic from the ocean. That's power. You see, putting the entire world in action of change. That's the plastic bank. There's some, yes, ma'am. How does this get distributed and how do, uh, are you in small island developing states? How do communities find you? Yeah, thank you very much. We, we, we are on a global mission. This, 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 it's, it's required to be global. Um, we get probably five inquiries a day from some small village somewhere around the world that wants us to be there. I have been self-funded to get to where I am today. I certainly need that additional input. I need help doing that. We need to grow and expand, and we need to be everywhere where there is both an abundance of poverty and plastic waste. How many pounds have you collected so far? Tens of millions. Yeah, I'm still a startup. You know, it's been four years since I had the idea. And so we've done a tremendous amount in that time. And there are billions and billions of pounds to collect. And when we looked at a fast moving consumer goods company that is using over five billion pounds a year and they're making commitments to use 25% recycled content, that's a great market opportunity for us as well. I should mention I am a for profit business and I want to exhibit the greatness of business and change. Hi. A lot of the processes for taking refined plastic mm -hmm. and bringing it back to a stage where you can do something new with it are highly endothermic chemical reactions. And they're quite energy intensive to take them backwards. And that's why commercially, plastics look like a dead end for a lot of businessmen. So what creative things are you doing from a chemistry perspective to bring the plastic back? Thank you, I, I, back? Can't, I can't answer that. I'm really an entrepreneur. I know uh, about this much about plastic. I know the plastic types. And I know that I can reveal value in them. Uh, we work with our partners and their bottlers and their, and their manufacturers to do that. The infrastructure already exists around the world. We don't want to interrupt that. We want to enliven that. Yeah, there's processes. Yes, they can't use all of our material. Yes, some of the material is dirty. Sometimes it'll go into lumber. Sometimes they'll give us an additional credit. Uh, you know, when they look at the entire volume of material that they are using, they can pay us a little bit extra to extract the same volume of material from the environment that they don't have to use, and it can go into other 
uh, processes. The so, reason why I'm asking this, yeah. it's a seeded question. Okay. So offline, I'd like to talk to you about a plasma arc furnace. Okay, great. That can turn 100% of that into useful materials. Oh, well, we can even make synthetic I'm, gas for you. I'm here to chat. Thank you very much for asking. Thank you. Thank you. What else is there? I'm, I'm a little bit out of time, but it might be one, one last question. Anything? No? Scale of 1 to 10, how do you feel about what we do? Yeah? Thank you. So, so remember, so three things. Come and talk to me. Engage me. Be in the conversation with me. Enliven me. Enliven the idea. Talk to others. Tell others about it. Post about it. Stop ocean plastic. Social plastic. And then, of course, tell people to use it. Engage them and demand that corporations use the material that helps end poverty and save the ocean. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you.